talk to us, tell us everything that you can think to, to say about it. Following along? What about that over one? Do we need to. Sorry, good. Well, I mean, over one, does that. Is there a difference between two and two over one? Yeah. It's fine that it's written two over one. Just want to make sure that we all. Are. It's, it's the same, right? But you're just showing uh, what we're supposed to do, which is write the factors of. Factors of what? 24. What's the 24 power? The constant, okay, the constant, uh, over the factors of what? The leading coefficient. The leading coefficient, okay. Um, yeah, there we go. And that's the whole list? Nothing more? Oh, I, yeah. It's all the factors of, uh, of 24. Anybody have any other factors of 24? 154, 6, 8, 12, 24, sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, who can show us? what we're supposed to do next. So Brett's going to pass it off to somebody else. I know I saw most people, if not everybody, with at least this next step. You can even show us like the best result. You don't have to guess and not get it. coefficients and stuff, and then I'm going to ask you a question from what you just said earlier. All right. So I was listening to this group here. Reese said something pretty interesting here when he was making his guess uh, of, of a negative one, right? And you yeah. said negatives were important, right? Why, yeah. why is it important to be a negative? Um, it has to be a negative because they... Um, all the other numbers are positive, and you're trying to subtract. Trying to get zero from 24. So, does that make sense? In the end, we're looking for 24 minus 24 to get zero. We've got to wind up with a zero. And if we use a positive number, then then what would happen? Would we add the positive? Yeah, just add a positive, 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 and whatever you add to 24, it would just probably be this really big number. So we gotta have negatives at some point, we gotta have minus 24. The only way to do that, there's no negatives involved otherwhere, anywhere other than the zeros that we guess. So what, if we were to look at that list of zeros there, what could we do with that list of zeros? Cross out all, all, all the positives. Now that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Okay, all of those, we, two, three, four, all the positives. None of those positives are going to be a zero of this polynomial, right? Does that make sense? Couldn't possibly be. Okay. All right. So then just go through one, negative one, six, six, twenty, twenty, and four, four, zero. Now we found a zero. All right. Do you want to write the, the next little piece that you had 
So that's what we that. get. That's what we get. What did we get out of what? What did we just do to get that? Um, synthetic substitution trying to find the one of the zeros. Right, so synthetic substitution told us that it was a zero because we got zero at the end. But that synthetic substitution is also the same as synthetic division, right? So we just divided, so what did we just divide? We divided by x plus one. So we divided that thing by x plus one. Which, okay, so that's it, right? That's that's what we get when we divide. So the x cubed plus six x squared plus twenty x plus twenty-four. Okay. Um, which is not equivalent to the original, right? The x to the fourth. What do we have to multiply that by to get x to the fourth plus seven um, x cubed? X plus one. Alright. So why don't we just write that so we can all see it? By that, by that, and so just make sure we have that. Okay. Good? Okay. So we'll, we'll start working from here. Because um, I noticed that uh, this group over here was just continually guessing more zeros, right? Try negative one, maybe try negative one after, uh, well, see, that's kind of a problem. Uh, try negative one, then try maybe negative two, negative three, negative four, and just keep plugging numbers and trying to see if those are zeros, right? So let's start from here. How can we start from here to find the other zeros? And these will pass along to somebody else. for what? What is our ultimate goal? What are we trying to find? Yeah. Trying to find zero. So remember to plug in the cos polynomial to be zero for the y value to be zero. Okay. Um, if I plug negative one into here, I'll get zero. I can see that, you know, my proof of that is here. If I plug negative one into here, I get zero times this would be zero, right? Uh, so there's some zeros that this polynomial has, right? The, po the zeros that this polynomial has is the other three zeros for this polynomial, right? Does that make sense? Times negative one, and possibly three others, right? Four total. Possibly three others, uh, and those other three would be in here. Okay? Possibly three other real zeros. Definitely has four zeros. There might have some repeats, might have some imaginary numbers, but uh, they're definitely, they definitely exist. Okay? So now the question is, if we want to find the rest of the zeros of this, we need to find all the zeros of this guy. So how are we going to find the zeros of this factor. Now that I'm asking you, I'm going to kind of concentrate on this group. If I just ask you, what are the zeros of this? Any ideas for finding the zeros of this polynomial, this third degree polynomial? Imagine. So imagine that that's all you see. Okay. Imagine we haven't done anything with this with the, the problem up until now. Imagine this is the problem. Like this is some other homework problem and I say find the zeros of this polynomial. What would you do from here? If instead of seeing this 
instead of seeing, or well, sorry, instead of seeing this at the beginning, instead of that being the thing that's in black, what if it was this to begin with? That was a question from the homework recap. What would you do with that? How would you find those zeros? The 24. You go to the 24. You go to the, the same thing that we did at the very beginning of this problem, right? We listed the zero or listed the possible zeros. Mm -hmm. Going to list the possible zeros again. Okay. We don't have any other way to go about it. We would try and factor it, but um, the, our only option. What is our option for this? If we were just going to go straight into trying to factor this, this third degree with four terms in it. By grouping, great, great. Um, but we try factor by grouping, it doesn't work? No. It doesn't work, okay. Um, doesn't work, so we use our new skills uh, with the rational zero test, that's what this is called, making a list of possible zeros. So, uh, plus or minus, Plus or minus one. Uh, plus or minus two, mm -hmm. plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, plus or minus eight, plus or minus twelve, plus or minus twenty-four. Okay. And we just keep it going. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that. Just do it again. We have no other recourse if we are all out of ideas as far as factoring goes or finding zeros, then we'll use the rational zero test. Um, so here we go. Could we try negative one? Is that possible? Yes. It is possible. You could have negative one again. You could possibly have x plus one times x plus one again times something else. Could happen. So don't count it out. It could work. How about any uh, of the positive ones? Are those going to work? Yeah. No, they weren't going to work here. They're certainly not going to work here. If there were zeros of this thing, there'd be zeros of that thing. Then we know that this one can't have any uh, negative zeros. So we can just cross that, or any positive zeros, excuse me. We can just discount all these. Okay. So anybody now with some like future knowledge that wants to come and show us what the process looks like from here? You guys may have found some zeros that you know work. Yeah, you keep getting further and further away from me, which I let only one person participate. Is that good? Everybody who tried negative two, did it work out? Mm -hmm. Okay, so negative two is a zero as well. So does that further help us break it down, factor this polynomial out more and more and more? Yeah. Okay, 
Brett, why don't you show us uh, like where we are now with our factorization? Else like to come up, participate towards that A level that is running far away from you, and just finish it out. Find the other zero. Helpful, you might not realize that we're we're looking now for the zeros of this guy right here, the zeros of this quadratic. You can find those. Again. Finding zeros of a quadratic is something we did in chapter four. We definitely have that skill in you right now. if you're not sure what you're supposed to do, if you ask a question. A question, this is the kind of issue I'm running into, something like that. Can it be factored more? That's a good question. Brett's asking, can it be factored more? Can this quadratic be factored more? I think so. I think it is. You think it can be factored more? Why? What makes you think that? Because um, it's to the second degree. You're yeah. trying to get it down to the first degree of x. True. So what we're looking for here is uh, two r, two factors. And how will we know we found the right two factors? What's the, we know we need two x's, an x and an x. And now what are we looking for when we factor this out? Add together and make four and multiply together and make 12. That's right, okay, so we're looking for numbers that multiply to make 12 and add to make four. Do you have any luck there? Not a lot of numbers multiply to make 12. Three and four, that adds to seven. Two and six, that adds to eight. 12 and 1, that is the 13. I think we're out of ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, let's have a little check next to your name. What do you guys do? I see it looking over here. The quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, very good. Okay. So, can, can someone come show us how to execute the quadratic formula? Someone walk me through it. <coughs> I haven't finished it yet. Hold on. 
Okay, I'm working on it. Tell me, how will you know if there are? Just Open going question, the everybody. What's that? Just going through the formula. Going through the formula. What part of the formula is going to tell you whether it's imaginary? The square root. The square root. So if uh, if Brett's suspicion is is valid, true. That's right. Um, then the square root will tell us. Okay. Has anybody found this out yet? Mm -hmm. Or sorry, please. Um, you want me to just go through the formula? Or? Well, let's. I mean, we're. Let's think about this. What it asks us to do is find all the real zeros, right? Yeah. Imaginary zeros aren't real zeros. Yeah, true. So we find out there's imaginary zeros. Our work is done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're getting we're getting smart about it. Let's just look at the the square root then. Um, square root of four, four square, four square, b square, minus four times one times twelve times twelve. Okay. Um, I guess I don't really I don't want to confuse anybody with that. Let's see what this comes out to be. This will be sixteen minus four times twelve is forty-eight. Negative. Yeah. Imaginary squares and negative numbers are imaginary. What were the directions to do? To ask us to do? Find all the real zeros. Did we find all the real zeros? Yeah. Yeah. How many zeros will this give us? One. How many zeros will the quadratic formula give us? Two. Two. Why? Why two? You know that you get two. Okay. Where did those two come from? Anybody remember? The quadratic formula is right over there. What about it gives us two different zeros? Uh, positive and negative square. Okay, just coming right in here, just doing the show. Okay. The positive and the negative. You got to add and you got to subtract whatever's in that square root to the constant that you find there, b. Uh, you add and subtract those are your two. So we'll just put the plus or minus to remind us of that. Uh, well, the other two zeros are what again? Pardon the interruption. Mrs. Golding's advanced placement English 12 class should be Mr. Schmidt's trailer. Mrs. Golding's English 10 honors class and creative writing students should be in Ms. Golding's classroom right now. Thank you. Um, so the last two zeros that we just found, we didn't, well, we didn't exactly find them, right? We found out that they were what? Imaginary. imaginary. They're imaginary. So they're not real, so we'll forget about them. If you're asked to find the real zeros, you're going to follow the directions, find all the real zeros, we did that. What are the real zeros? Um, two and one. Negative. Negative two, negative one. Okay. Uh, okay, so we found those two. So, Anthony, why don't you come up and, and uh, grab about these guys. So let's talk about a couple things here. If you do just keep let's go back to the beginning. If at the beginning you make this list and then you guess, let's say negative one, and you find it. Okay, great. And then you think, well, I, I'm not, I don't remember what to do next, but I could just guess again. Right? Try negative two, and it works. Great. And here's a couple of things. Um, negative one could work again. Remember we talked about that? We could have a factor of x plus one and x plus one. But if we just keep applying it to this same fourth degree polynomial, we'll never figure that out. We'll never figure out there's a second factor of x plus one second zero of negative one. So that's one thing. So we want to be able to break it down more and more and more, factor it more and more and more. Then um, if, we, if we break it down, it makes it easier. If we factor it out, it makes it easier. 
If we keep guessing this, we could have guessed negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 12, negative 24, and possibly not come up with anything. Like none of those might have worked. Okay. So it's pretty important to get down to that second degree and use the quadratic formula on that if necessary. If, it that one. Okay. if you're lucky, you'll guess and you'll guess and you'll guess four times. You'll have four different zeros and everything will be great. But when you guess all of those and maybe you come out with two zeros, are the other zeros irrational or are they imaginary or what's going on there? Or are, are there just two zeros of negative one and two zeros of negative two? You will never find out until you factor it and then apply the same strategy to that, come down here, get the second degree, and factor it, or use the quadratic formula. Okay, so, keep that in mind. Uh, let's go on to the next. All right, to put the set together, clearly I got a two out in front, so that makes it a little bit different. That's why I've chosen it. Similar, how is it slightly different from the problem we just did? Yeah, yeah, the two. Get the two. So what does that change? It changes the factoring coefficient. Right, so when it comes to our possible zeros, uh, we have more. We have more, yeah, we have more than if there was a leading coefficient of one. We have a leading coefficient of two, so we get uh, all the factors of 14, 1, 2, 7, and 14. But we also get 1 half. 1 half. 2 halves. 7 halves. Uh, 14 halves. Okay. So before we go on from there, this is what I'm going to see on the, on the tests. I want to see these full complete lists. Okay? Yes? Um, but you can eliminate 2 over 2 yes. and 14. Those yeah, this is one, and that's seven, and so why have those twice? Very good, very good. Okay, so how many possible zeros do we have? Six. Six? Anybody with a different number? Twelve. It's twelve, right? Because we got the positives and the negatives. Zeros we already know work from the work one. Are we done? Negative one. Uh, 11, negative 14. <laughs> Is that good? Is this set up correctly? Yeah. So far? Okay, no zeros needed, right? Because we don't have any blank spots. We go to two, negative two, three, three, negative 14, 14, zero, there we go. Okay? Somebody want to finish it up for us? Show us how to finish this up. Come on, let's go here. Huh? Do you want me to go play? Yeah, just, just show us how to finish it up. This is how to write it down? Just finish the problem and find the, the other two zeros. No. I'm going to start coming up, counting, coming up to the board. So you wrote it out. Okay. Pretty small. That's all right. Uh, you got the quadratic, and you're going to find the zeros of that quadratic. I'm going to find the zeros of that quadratic. Yeah, find the zeros of that quadratic. That would be the, we already found one of the zeros. The other two zeros are here. Okay. I don't know. Like, are you, am I like writing it out again for 14? Um, you can. The only thing that I need from you is to find the other two zeros. However you go about it, factoring, quadratic formula, whatever it is that you would do. Yeah. I didn't do the homework. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, quadratics is from chapter four. I just four. wrote this yeah. and that's it. This is chapter four stuff right here. I just want you to find the, the zeros of this quadratic. Investigate that, see if we factor it. First factor would be x plus 1. Wait, you mean like the two sets or like write it out? Like the 
Just one two, and fourteen. Yeah, two sets of parentheses okay. for this one. Okay. So while she's writing that, uh, uh, Anthony yeah. said that the first factor would be x plus one. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like, uh, so uh, if that's minus one, yeah. uh, one, fa one of the factors of that conclusion would be x plus one. Right. So x plus one times that quadratic would give us the original. Well, we're looking for, it's got to multiply by negative 14. Right? Mm -hmm. But it also has the 2. Right? It also has the 2. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm showing it with the minus. Oh, it's minus. OK. Yeah. Now, the thing is, this could be minus, yeah, or this could be minus. Yeah. Right? So we're going to maybe have to mm -hmm. play around with it a little bit. Yeah. Right? So why don't we just try something? You know, try to remember to multiply by 14. Let me check and see if that works. So and let's get the factorization 2x plus 7, x minus 2. Agree, disagree? Agree? Puzzled look? Why are you puzzled? I don't really understand what she's doing. Because I did it how we did like the last problem. Uh -huh. And I got two zeros. You got what? Two. Two zeros only? No, I just got two as one of the zeros. Oh, two as one of the zeros. So you have zero of two is going to come out of that factor of x minus two. Oh yeah. Right. You mean you got you got a two up here? You get your guess was two, right away. Yeah. And so yeah, you would have a different quadratic then, right? Oh yeah. And so your factorization would be different. Okay. Okay. All of these zeros, right? We can see a zero of negative one, a zero of two, and a zero of what? What would this? What zero would this give us? Negative seven. Negative seven half, right? Subtract seven and a half and uh, divide by two. So negative seven and a half, two and negative one. So maybe you guessed two, maybe you guessed seven and a half, or negative seven and a half, probably nobody guessed negative seven and a half right off the bat. Okay. But you could have guessed negative one, you could have guessed two. If you guessed two, your quadratic would look different, right? Um, how, does, how does it work out? I'm not trying to be like So now I need your homework. Uh, just 
put it all in the middle of your group, I'll come by and grab it. Okay, or a pink slip, go get a pink slip. Do you have all your points? There you go. Okay, on 5.7. Basically the same as 5.6, only it opens up the possibility of uh, imaginary zeros. Okay? And when we include imaginary zeros, then we get something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay? Here's the fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, an nth degree polynomial has exactly how many how many zeros? The highest. So n means the highest power, which means the degree. Mm -hmm. So if this was a fourth degree, how many zeros would it have? Four. If it was a fifth degree, yeah. if it was an nth degree, yeah. n. N zeros, okay? Uh, n factors, okay, for, if we call it f of x, we could say n solutions to f of x equals zero. These are all almost exactly the same thing. They're equivalent statements, but not exactly the same statement, but they're equivalent statements. If we have n zeros, well, that's exactly what this is. When we set f of x equal to zero, the numbers that solve this are called zeros. Okay. If n is a zero, we've already established that n is a factor. Or uh, if 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 a number is a zero, then x minus that number is a factor. Okay. So however many zeros it has, it has that many factors. Okay. So the number of the degree is the number of factors. If We include uh, repeat zeros. What do I mean by repeat zeros? Two negative ones. Two negative ones. So that, that polynomial you were talking about is going to have an x plus one factor and an x plus one factor again, and then you know whatever else. Right? Two of the same zero. Repeat zero. And one other thing, repeat zeros and and imaginary zeros. So if we include repeat zeros and imaginary zeros, every polynomial of n degree has n zeros, n factors, n solutions to f of x equals zero. So by stating that, beginning of the section 5.7, by stating that, they're telling you, hey, we're going to wind up with some imaginary zeros, basically. We're going to find
find every single zero, which means repeat zeros and imaginary zeros. So the, the, the process looks exactly the same as before, only at the very end, I'm just cluing you into something here. The way we're going to find the imaginary zeros or the irrational zeros is to have guessed out all the other zeros and then get that quadratic and use the quadratic formula. Is that jelly? Yeah? Okay. So, um, Groups, just help each other out. Make some progress, share it with your group members. It should start out exactly the same as before. Exactly the same as last section. your attention to the fact that we don't have an x cubed, that we don't have an x. Keep that in mind. What does it mean? Ask your friend. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and get us going. Okay. We don't have a lot of time. I think as we do groups and stuff like this more often, we'll go quicker, more smoothly. But it's been going great so far. Uh, regardless. So the first thing that we do is we list out what? Uh, factors of the constant. Factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient, which is one. So we would just do the factors of the constant. One, two, four, eight, and sixteen solve. Okay, we'll give this a try. One would be good. One would be good, okay. So we'll put a what? One, a zero. Zero. A fifteen. Fifteen. Another zero. Zero. Yeah, placeholders for 0x to the third and 0x. One, 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 sixteen, 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 zero. Okay. So what we have here is one times x cubed. Plus x squared. Plus sixteen x. Plus sixteen. Okay. So, as we get more familiar with this, you might notice here's something you could do. You already found a zero of one, right? Which, what factors does that give you? Uh, the same ones. Uh, X minus one. X minus one, that gives you that factor, right? If we were factoring it, we could just record that factor. And then we could just set this up again. We're gonna use these numbers anyway, right? And then just go on to our next guess, because it's a, well, let's see. Do we even need to do that? Do we have to use synthetic again? No. We don't even have to do that. What do you have, Emily? Um, just factor it out. Okay, how did you factor out this, which looks kind of tricky to factor? Um, factor by grouping. Okay, so we group this together and group this together. x squared times x plus 1 plus 16 going to be factored out of that, x plus 1 again, no. okay, that right here, uh, I got x plus 1 times x squared plus 16, right, so now we're at x plus 1, x squared plus 16, okay, so how are we going to find the zeros of this right here? Uh, square. Square? Where are you going to square it? Quadratic formula, okay, I'll be a little picky about that. The quadratic formula on that absolutely will work. Any other ideas? Can you factor this out as? Um, x minus four x plus two. Okay, let's see what that will give us. So x minus four times x plus four will give us x squared. It'll give us negative four x plus four x. So that would give us 0x like that. But now that gives us minus 16. Right? That's a difference of squares. 
squares. Okay. Uh, this is four integers of squares. This is a sum of squares. So. And if you remember from our, our, our days and days of quadratics that we've been doing, um, a sum of squares isn't factorable. Okay? Quadratic formula works also. Okay. Now I'm going to trust that everybody can use a quadratic formula. I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me use a quadratic formula. Okay. But that's definitely one way to do it. Um, here's another way. What are we looking for again? The zeros. What is a zero? The definition of a zero? Nothing. Nothing? It doesn't exist. You plug it into the plug it in. Plug it in for x. And the equation. Yeah. And you get zero, right? Okay. Well, at this stage, we would set each of these equal to zero. x equals one, we do that x plus 1 equals 0. We found that factor by factor by grouping, so x equals negative 1 as well. If we set x squared plus 16 equal to 0, there's no x term, which makes it a pretty easy equation to solve. If you, uh, How are we going to solve this for x? Subtract 16. Subtract 16. And then square root both sides. Square root both sides. x equals plus or minus. What's the square root of negative 16? Or I. Or I. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of negative 1 is I. So square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1, 4 times I. That's my answer for I. We found the other two zeros. They are what kind of zeros? Imaginary zeros. Okay. Great. <coughs> so again, quadratic formula, absolutely great, works perfectly. Also, we can set just the factor equal to zero and solve for x. Um, we, yeah, we won't get into that. We'll talk about that some other time. Um, Let's think about this. Now let's start. We, we've kind of started without a beginning. We haven't given you like a zero to start with, so you have any guesses about the zeros and find the rest of the zeros. What if I just tell the zero, zeros and ask you to build a polynomial? Okay, so get ready. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you what the zeros are and work together, if you can work together, and try to figure out how would you construct the polynomial from the zeros that I gave you. Okay, so I'm going to give you these zeros. Negative 5, negative 1, 2. Imagine I gave you a polynomial, you did all the work, you found out these were the zeros. How can you work as a group, figure out how to use that information to go back and build up the polynomial from that information? Okay? That will work.
did you come up with? How did we decide we could build up a polynomial from the information, here are the zeros of a polynomial? Just without, just before we found these zeros, we would have it like all factored out. It would be equal to zero. We set each of the factors equal to zero. Solve and find that the opposites of these things, right? So we would just multiply them together. Okay, if we multiply polynomials together. I'm certain that we can. So I'll leave that to you. Um, one other thing. Okay. Now we have decided we we can have imaginary zeros. So I can give you the same kind of an issue where. We have imaginary zeros in the mix. Okay? So, um, if I tell you that the zeros of some polynomial are 5 and 2 and 3 plus 4 i. Now, imagine you did the work of getting the zeros. Where did this zero come from? How did you find it? How would that zero have come up? Four i would be square root of negative sixteen. Okay. How did you? Like, where are you getting the square root of negative sixteen? Like, what part of your process of finding the zeros would would cause that to come up? Because um, square root of sixteen would be i square root of sixteen. But how does it come up? How do, how do we come about the square root of negative 16? What's that? So we used a quadratic formula, and we got that one of the zeros is 3 plus 4i. This seems like incomplete information here. Right? Is there a zero missing? If we use a quadratic formula, how many zeros should we find? What should the other one be? Minus 3 minus 4i. It's called the conjugate. That's our other zero. So let's uh, put our desks back together, please. Uh, them, uh, with the tape.